Welcome to the continuation of our uh, Sabbath School uh, studies. Uh, this morning, the panel discussion uh, for the lesson will be hosted by uh, Wainando English Church, as we did last week. And uh, the lesson will be the fourth uh, uh, lesson of uh, the quarter, uh, and it covers the book of uh, Isaiah. Uh, we, you will recall that last week, we focus on when our world, or when your world is falling apart. And uh, that focus on faithless King Ahaz. Uh, he rejected not only God's messenger, but God's message, and of course, he rejected God. And uh, we will continue our study into the life of uh, King Ahaz. And uh, to help, uh, help me out with, uh, with the discussion, uh, the panelist to my right here is uh, Divono Wanga, uh, and uh, joining us as well is a uh, uh, local minister for Wainandoe Church, uh, Taltala Toma Naivalu, and uh, at the far end is uh, Ravuni Ulula Kemba Jr. Okay, so those are our panelists, and uh, the title for uh, this week is The Hard Way. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be continuing our study into the, uh, the life of, uh, or the reign of King uh, Ahaz. And uh, before we begin, we'll invite uh, Ravun to offer prayer. Please. Thank you. Let's uh, bow our heads in prayer. Mm. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. Mm. As we spend this time in your word, we pray and ask that you will open our minds and that you will fill your servants' hearts with your spirit. Mm. Please speak to us now for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, for our memory text, okay, for this week, it's found in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 17. Uh, and I read, I will wait on the Lord who hides his face from the whole house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Okay, so these are the words of Isaiah, expressing his utmost desire to wait uh, upon the Lord, uh, to call upon the Lord because of his everlasting hope, okay? uh, hope always in, uh, in God. Uh, so this takes us into uh, uh, our lesson discussion this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, we welcome all our viewers, if you may be watching, uh, joining us here in Fiji, uh, as well as abroad. Special welcome to each one of you. Um, the discussion is dis divided into five sections. The first one is uh, entitled Prophecy Fulfilled. Number two is Consequences of Turning Away from the Lord. The third one uh, is, uh, relates to the testimony of Isaiah's second son. You'll recall that last week we discussed Isaiah's first son. Okay, And the fourth uh, section is choosing to reverence the Lord rather than be fearful. And the last one is choosing to listen to God rather than demons. Okay. Uh, we will now begin our discussion and uh, we'll have Taltala Toma uh, help us with this, uh, with this question. Uh, I'll begin with, the Lord revealed through the prophet Isaiah that both the northern kingdom of Israel and Syria would be destroyed. Right. Okay, the destruction of those two kingdoms. Eh? Mm -hmm. When was this prophecy fulfilled? Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Henry. Uh, let me allow me to first discuss uh, with uh, with you all um, um, our our memory text. Let me begin from the memory text. I will wait on the Lord, who hides His face from the house of Jacob. And I will hope in him. We see a contrast in the memory text, uh, uh, Brother Henry and the panelists. We see that this God 
that is actually turning away from the mm. house from of Israel is the same God that uh, Isaiah is putting his trust into. And we see the life of King Ahaz and this prophecy being fulfilled when God decides, okay, uh, Israel and also Syria, you will be destroyed. Now, we must also consider that uh, the life of Ahaz, King Ahaz, is not only recorded in the book of Isaiah. Uh, in order to... Some more details are given in Second Kings. So, in the Bible, let me just uh, read a few verses to us and see if the fulfillment of this prophecy in Isaiah uh, is, was ever recorded. Now, in Second Kings chapter 16, verse 7 and 9, I'm reading from the New King James uh, Version. It reads, So Ahaz sent messages, messenger rather, to Tiglath-Pilser, king of Assyria, saying, I'm your servant and your son. Come up and save me from the hand of king Syria and from the hand of king of Israel who rise up against me. And I, Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of king's house and sent it as a present to king Assyria. So the king Assyria heeded him for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it, carried his people captive, captive to Ker and killed Rezin. Now we see the uh, person who wrote the book of Kings actually writes down the historical uh, uh, record or event of, of when was Israel and, uh, and uh, Assyria, or Syria rather, uh, being destroyed. I'm also interested, um, Brother Henry, on why was uh, Israel destroyed? It was because of last week's lesson. You see, it was because he rejected the messenger and also the message given by God. Now, of course, it was, so the timeline for that was, uh, of this destruction came about in 734 uh, BC to 722 BC. So not only we see prophecy being fulfilled here, but we see the word of God is ever true, coming out alive in scripture. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Taltal. Uh, Ravuni, uh, how would you have responded okay, if you were a faithful servant of the Lord mm -hmm. uh, living in the northern kingdom of Israel at the time? At this point, everyone who lived in that country, uh, the country of Israel, the state of Israel, they are now dispersed all around the kingdom of Israel. Right. And uh, they no longer have uh, people of uh, the same faith with them, people of uh, the same uh, backgrounds. But they now live amongst people of different religions, different beliefs. Um, it would have been a disheartening time. It would have been a really disheartening time. And I like how we, uh, the, the verse that you ended with uh, in the last Sabbath school lesson, it was Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. And uh, it says, uh, these are Jesus' final words to his disciples and to his people. He says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And I think it's it's so important to always remember that mm -hmm. that whatever happens, uh, come disaster, come disappointment, frustration, uh, in the midst of all that, that, God is always with us. And maybe I'll also share Hebrews chapter eleven verse sixteen. But as it is, but as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed. He has prepared a city for them. So yes, their, their city was demolished. They were taken out and scattered all over the kingdom of Israel. I think in the big picture, it would have been important as believers then, and even believers now, to know that uh, our true city is the new city of Jerusalem, yeah. one that we're all looking forward to. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Ravuni. Yeah, when, you know, living in you know, some part of the world, is most likely that we will be outnumbered. Mm. True. We will be outnumbered uh, by non-believers, mm. okay, those who do not share the same faith with us. And 
you know, the, the challenge is to continue to uphold that faith yeah. we have in God. Yeah. And the classical illustration in that regard is Daniel and his three friends. True. Okay, in Babylon. Okay, let's continue on. Uh, Vono, your first uh, question is how should we respond today when we recognize our leaders have disregarded the counsel of God? I beg to hand you. Um, just like what uh, Ravuni was uh, sharing, um, that now many, uh, there's a lot of denominations and uh, they have, um, they believe differently. And um, what we can do to those that has um, disregarded uh, the teaching of uh, God is just that um, for them to continue to have hope, eh? uh, never give up, because um, God never gave up on us. Eh? Mm -hmm. He still has uh, hope on, in us, and um, we should do the same as well for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Ono. Okay, that uh, ends uh, that first section on prophecy fulfilled. Okay, uh, now God keeps his promises. Amen. And the prophecies contained in his word, uh, as we read uh, from the various pro prophets uh, of the Bible, or books of the Bible, uh, the prophecies are there. Most of them have been fulfilled. Uh, some, like the second coming of Jesus, yet to be fulfilled. But they will all be fulfilled. Amen. And uh, for us believers, what what would be our response to these prophecies? Mm. Okay, and that takes us to the second section of our discussion, mm. the consequences okay, of turning away from the Lord. Okay, in life, whenever you plan something or you'd like to do something, you've always got to think of the results, the outcomes, mm. the consequences, okay, the impact. Okay? So that on the consequences of turning away from the Lord, uh, Vono, your first, you'll be starting our discussion with this. Uh, what troubles you as you read this account of the apostasy of King Ahaz, whose father Jotham did what was right in the sight of the Lord? Uh, thank you, Henry. Um, the first thing I want to this uh, question, I can find uh, this uh, disobedient. Um, what took place uh, can be found in the book of uh, Second Kings, chapter sixteen, verse uh, ten to eighteen. Eh? It uh, describes all the uh, the things that uh, King Ahaz did, mm. and um, the thing that troubles me was that um, when I read this um, this chapter was that um, even though his dad did what was right to God and he did not, I would say he was um, a very disobedient uh, person. Eh? Mm. He, he never had uh, faith in God. He um, lost hope. And um, even though God was always there for him, he never tend to uh, realize that, eh? mm. and uh, yes, he, he continually disregarded mm. God. Eh? God. Right. Okay, this particular king, as we uh, studied last week, he was deeply involved in pagan religion, mm. sure. okay, offering sacrifices to other gods. Okay, and uh, these are things that, of course, displeased God. Right now, to the the second uh, question goes for this section goes to Taltal, Taltal Toma. Name some other Bible characters whose lives degenerated when they turned away from the Lord. Uh, thank you, thank you, Henry. Yes, um, Ahaz uh, is not uh, only uh, a good example of people who turned away from God and their lives degenerate. Um, well, Ahaz mm, must have cost uh, a lot because many lives were gone and it actually disrupted uh, God's plan for his, mm. for his children, for the people of Israel. Uh, another Bible character, Henry, 
uh, would be Jonah. Jonah also has this, uh, um, also went through this part, but literally while turning away from God, from God's instruction. Now, let me just read in, let's, uh, from Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. Mm. And notice the word down repeatedly coming. Uh, the, now, I'm actually uh, referring to your question and literally understanding the generators going down. So, Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. But Jonah arose to flee to Tashis. From presence of the Lord, he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tashish. So he paid the fare and went down into it uh, to go with them into Tashish from the presence of the Lord. Uh, uh, that place in Joppa is actually north of Jerusalem, but how he writes it here is putting, he went down to Joppa. Then when he bought the ship, he went down into the ship. Then uh, verse 5 just that last part. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship and lay down and was fast asleep. So when people turn away from God, <laughs> the direction is always going down. And this is a, a classical example, literally. Mm. Uh, I, I, I'm picking this Old Testament character. And let me pick another character in the New Testament. And that is the life of Judas. However... Mm. Judas uh, did not survive like Jonah, but uh, he had himself killed. So a degenerated life is also witnessed in this character. But uh, this character is also important, Judas. You know why, uh, Henry? Because he was a follower of Jesus uh, for the last part of his life. Just that small second. Mm -hmm. He did something wrong and there it goes. So... Uh, uh, turning away from God can actually attack us at any time of our life is one point. And another point that can be, uh, we can be a faithful Christian now. And that just that last moment, you become unfaithful and you just lose the rest of it, including the heavenly home that God had for us. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Taltal. Uh, now to Ravuni. Okay, what counsel, what advice would you give to a friend who says to you, I have wandered so far away from God and have done things I never would have imagined just a few years ago. Is there any hope for me? Thank you, Henry. I would say, even before going to uh, uh, passages or stories in the Bible, I would say yes, but from my own experience as uh, a believer in God, and seeing how he has worked through my life. And uh, I'd probably just like to point out uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 7. I'll, I'll read it out. Uh, it says, these are the words of Paul, But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places, and under whose authority we might ask? Paul says, in Christ Jesus. Amen. And this is why, this is why. So that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness to us. Not only Ahaz, not only Jonah, but to each one of us as well. And he showed that, revealed it to us in Christ Jesus, his son. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in times when we seem far away from, or God seems distant to us, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it's so important uh, that uh, we realize that that God is working at full capacity, and that He does not work at anything less than full capacity, mm -hmm. and continuing to pursue us, mm -hmm. continuing to find ways to bring us back to Him. Mm -hmm. And you have actually seen this in your life. Oh, yes. As, as uh, John uh, as John wrote, uh, I think we shared it last week, he says, I have seen him, I have touched him, I have experienced him. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that I share the same sentiments as, uh, as Apostle John eh? mm -hmm. uh, in my own life. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, you know, Ravuni is one of our young, two young panelists, uh, you know, helping me out with, uh, with the discussions today. 
uh, you know, it's, it should be encouraging to young people, you know, okay, that uh, we can testify, okay, to the, to the promises of God, the prom, uh, prophecies, uh, and the experiences, both good and bad, you know, during our spiritual uh, yeah. journey. Yeah, okay, thank you for that uh, testimony. Uh, you know, con the consequences of turning away from the Lord, it will lead us to destruction. It's a recipe for disaster. Okay. Uh, if we turn away from the Lord, defeat is guaranteed. Okay, now that, this uh, takes us to uh, the third section of our discussion, and uh, it's entitled The Testimony of Isaiah's Second Son. Okay, remember last week we discussed Isaiah's first son. Okay, first son, and uh, this week it's uh, on the second son. Taltalo, uh, what is the meaning of the name of Isaiah's second son? Okay, and uh, what prophecy is given through his name? Right. Uh, thank you, Henry. Uh, it's just before I answer your question, you must understand that uh, Isaiah chapter 7 and Isaiah chapter 8, they must go together, and you can never separate them. Uh, we've studied chapter 7 last week, mm -hmm. and this week's lesson is just uh, so important as last week. And having having that in mind, now the announcement for the second child, or Isaiah's second son, comes in chapter 8, right at the beginning of chapter 8. And it comes in verse 1, and I'll read down from verse 1 to verse 3. Moreover, the Lord said to me, Take a large scroll and write on it with the man's pen concerning Maher Shalal Hazbaz. And I will take for myself faithful witness, witnesses rather, to record. Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jebekariah. Then I went to the prophetess and she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said to me, Call his name my shalal has bars. This, this is uh, another son given to Isaiah, uh, his second son. Uh, there's something about um, this, uh, this name before God uh, said to him, um, you must name him uh, Mahar shalal has bars. God had spoken to him before and told him to write it down. Uh, that means, uh, for those of you who are viewing this program, you must uh, the repetition that is written here must allow us to see that this is important. The name is important. And uh, for your question, Henry, now the 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 word such a long name, that Hebrew name, it means um, it's swift as a booty and speedy as a, as as the prey. So it is. It it has this um, it has this uh, element of uh, war. It also has this understanding that we must consider that something that will happen fast. Uh, yes, and uh, this is this name was to be a reminder, just as the first son. So yeah, just to answer your question, mm -hmm. that's what it means. Um, swift is the booty, and speedy is the prey. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, that was the second son. Yes, second son. Now, we'll revisit the life of the first son. Okay. Uh, now, next question uh, for Wono. When we face calamities, why is it important to remember the name of Isaiah's first son, Shir Jashub, and also the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14? The important thing that um, for us to remember, the reason why we should remember, um, Isaiah's first son when we face calamities is that um, the meaning of his name is the rem a remnant shall return yeah? and uh, that basically talks about God's second coming mm. and uh, that he will return again and uh, if we are facing um, calamities now struggling and uh, we still have that hope that one day all these uh, uh, things will come to an end and God will, uh, Jesus will come back again. Eh? And uh, for the prophecy that Isaiah talks about in the, uh, 
in the chapter 7, verse uh, 14, is that everything we go through now, be rest assured that uh, God is always with us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Vono. Okay, that's, uh, you know, thank you for linking up the, the name of Isaiah's first son, as well as the prophesied uh, child of God, Emmanuel. Eh? Yes. Okay, which means uh, God with us. Can I just read that to us, uh, sorry, sure. Henry? Yeah. Chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. With capital S, I'm reading from the New King James, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Mm. You go down in verse 16. For before the child shall know, notice the capital C, know to refuse the evil and choose the good. The land that you tread will be forsaken by both her kings. So, uh, yes, calamities will always be there, and the testimonies of Isaiah's two son is referring to this special child. Mm. Uh, it was directing uh, the, all the minds of people who will read the book of Isaiah and also the people back then that they have hope coming. A son will be given. He is Emmanuel. And this one child, uh, God is actually painting the picture to King Ahaz and Isaiah that we have two sons and the, the definition of their names actually uh, brings us to Jesus, uh, the, name, the meaning of the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, speedy as, a, uh, speedy as a prey, just came and defeated the devil in only three days, uh, while the world had to suffer for more than 2,000, 6,000 years. And, uh, and also, it not, not only that, it was swift, it was very quick. How much God, uh, as Ravuna said, use His full capacity to save us, mm -hmm. to save and redeem us. Okay, thank you, uh, Taltala. You know the, the prophets those days had names which had significant meanings. Mm -hmm. sure. mm -hmm. Okay, uh, prophetic meanings, sure. and even their children too, as we've seen through the mm -hmm. Isaiah's family. Mm -hmm. And there are the prophets such as Hosea, Hosea. his wife Gomer. They had three children, one daughter. Even the daughter had a prophetic name. Mm -hmm. uh, and we read that in uh, Hosea chapter 1, verses 4 uh, to 9. Eh? And of course, the two sons. So uh, those names were, had you know, prophetic significance. Yes. And we praise the Lord that it's, it was relevant to the people then. And it's just as relevant to us today. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, our next uh, section is entitled Choosing to Reverence the Lord uh, Rather Than Be Fearful. Okay, we'll begin uh, with uh, Ravuni. The word fear, okay, fear uh, has two meanings, both in Hebrew and Greek, uh, to be afraid or to reverence. Mm -hmm. okay, what makes the difference? Okay, thank you, Henry. Uh, maybe I'll read uh, uh, from... Isaiah chapter 8 and uh, three verses that kind of puts it into context for us. Uh, the word of God says, For the Lord spoke thus to me while his hand was strong upon me and warned me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, Do not call conspiracy all that this people calls conspiracy, and do not fear what it fears or be in dread. But the Lord of hosts, him you shall, him sh you shall regard as holy, let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. Just from reading this, uh, we see um, we see how fear can be defined by um, it can be defined by the thing that you put your trust in. True. So there's two contrasts. There's two groups here. Yeah? The first uh, that is mentioned is those who have. Uh, put their trust in uh, their king mm. and in the alliances that their king seeks to make. Mm. And then uh, there is uh, the second one is the fear that comes with uh, uh, giving God the, uh, the respect, the reverence, uh, the worship that he alone deserves. Now, 
a few weeks earlier in, the, in our lesson study, we learned that uh, Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, we see him, he sees a vision. And the vision coincides with uh, the death of King Isaiah. And uh, he sees God. Um, he's seated on his throne. And uh, his robe, the end part of it, uh, fills the temple. And he has been attended to by seraphims. They've uh, veiled faces and veiled feet. And this, uh, as you read it, you see this... Uh, it's just reverence, this all this, this just, oh, they, they're worshipping uh, our God. I, I Just before we came this morning, I, I was watching, you'll be watching, this is, uh, this is uh, this week, the American president was inaugurated. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was watching, I could not help but uh, admire at the, at the amount of pomp that they gave into that ceremony. There's trumpets blaring every step that he took, soldiers saluting. Here we don't just have soldiers; we have angels uh, saluting and uh, and and serving our God. Mm -hmm. We have a God who uh, sees above all, and uh, not only that, but He's Almighty, all powerful, mm -hmm. and we get to call Him Father uh, because we are His children. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that in itself, uh, it uh, th there is no element of fear there, but it drives us to give Him. Uh, can I say the full reverence that he deserves mm. uh, as creator God and as a redeemer? Mm. Sure. Thank you, uh, Ravun, yeah, for emphasizing the need for you know reverence. Eh? Mm. That is that God alone deserves. Mm. Okay. Uh, related to that, we'll turn our attention to Taltala now. Uh, share some Bible texts then that encourage us. Not to be afraid. Oh, thank you, uh, Henry. Let me just share with us uh, two Bible texts, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. From the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Uh, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. There is one Bible text that uh, clearly explains itself. Mm. Uh, we must not fear, uh, but put our trust in him. Uh, as uh, Ravuni had said, it is uh, our reverence to God will actually be weighed out for fearing him. We will be weighed out in how much we trust him. And the next one is in Revelation chapter 1. And in verse... Uh, 17 and 18. Here, John saw in a vision and he heard uh, Jesus saying these words. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hates and of death. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, two different scenarios, but we see the words are the same. So first point uh, regarding fear and reverence and how much uh, God still needs our reverence. And for everyone who comes at, the, at his feet, we still need to show reverence. The problem here is fear, which is again defined in how much we trust him. Shall we make alliance or shall we make other... Uh, things to settle our or shall we put our trust in God mm. and uh, yes I see both words are said by God and they are not different they're still the same God of the Old Testament New mm. Testament and still today mm. okay thank you for those uh, thoughts you know a lot of people are going through this experience of fear True. now the third question uh, on uh, reverence for Bono share some Bible texts that encourage us to fear the Lord, showing him reverence and respect. A good uh, Bible text that we can refer to is uh, Psalms chapter 34, verse uh, 8 to 10, and uh, it reads, Taste and see that the Lord is good, all the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those 
who trust in the Lord will lack no good things. Uh, thank you for um, that text basically encourages that um, all we need to do is um, have faith in God. Eh? Mm. Uh, put your trust in God and he will um, guide you through. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You know, we in life we we will face difficulties. We will face challenges. Mm -hmm. We will encounter problems, issues, uh, some of which you may be comfortable in sharing with your friends or relatives. True. Uh, maybe some you just you are simply unable to share. True. And God is there to listen to your mm -hmm. prayers. And uh, with you know the the words of encouragement that we uh, that we read in the Bible. Eh? Uh, I'd, I'd just like to refer to this story in Second Chronicles chapter 20. Okay? Uh, God's words of encouragement, word of encouragement to King Joseph. Mm -hmm. Then we read in verse 15, and he said, Hakani, all Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Joseph, thus saith the Lord unto you, okay, this is God's message to the king uh, through Jehaziah, right? Okay, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid. Okay, be not be dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Okay, the battle for the battle is not yours but God's. Okay, this is something that we should continually remind us uh, about that. The, battle, the battles we face on a daily basis, if only we just let God take control of okay, it. Commit it to him. Okay, uh, our final section, okay, choosing to listen to God rather than demons. Mm. Okay, remember we are focusing on uh, the acts or the faithless acts of King Ahaz, right? right? So choosing to listen to God rather than demons. Okay, uh, we'll begin with Taltala. What warning does the Lord give regarding occult uh, practices introduced by King Ayers. Um, thank you, Henry. Um, we pick up uh, this, uh, his life and how much he has done, uh, showing his uh, faithless, uh, uh, faith, faithless side of him in uh, Isaiah chapter 8. And uh, it, it is in verse 19 that the instruction is given. And when they say to you, Seek those who are mediums and wizards, who, wish, who whisper and mutter. Should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? Now, um, there's a, this verse leaves it to a question. As, uh, as God's people, uh, the Bible and even God, uh, actually outlines that uh, we are people who are supposed to be seeking answers from him. Uh, Lord, please uh, answer me. And uh, not demons. Mm -hmm. uh, he has poorly did this because he went and seek alliance. He went to wizards and uh, he sought mediums. And he he was taking this fear into his heart. This was his problem, Henry. And uh, sometimes it's just a mind thing, you know. Sometimes our journey with the Lord is just, uh, it's, 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 in, it's in us. And the uh, Lord is uh, instructing us. We take it to the Lord. Let's, let's take it to Him. And uh, for those of you who are joining us, whatever you are facing at this moment that is burdening your hearts, it's quite heavy on you. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Just take it to Him. Uh, I'm sure He is a way out for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, uh, Taltala. Uh, now, related to that is uh, the next question uh, for Vono. What other passages of Scripture warn us about engaging ourselves in uh, occult practices? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Henry. Uh, for this, we can um, uh, 
find this in the book of um, Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9 to 12 and it reads when you enter the land of the Lord your God is giving you be very careful not to imi imitate the dis detestable customs of the li nation living there for example never sacrifice your son or daughter or daughter as a burnt offering and do not let your people practice fortune telling or use sorcery or interpret omens or engage with witchcraft or cast spell or function a mediums or psychic or call for the spirit of the dead anyone who does these things is detestable to the lord it is because the other nation have done these detestable things that the lord your god will drive them out ahead of you um so this text um, explains that um, some of us, when we face uh, difficulties, they tend they tend to um, look for all these sorts of um, other miracles, eh? mm. and um, for us, it's um, it won't really help, eh? because uh, all we have to do is ask the Lord, because the God knows what's best for us, and um, and um, even if you ask him and um, it will, won't happen according to what, what your time, I have the patience to wait for a while because um, mm. he will uh, definitely get back to you. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, Von. Uh, you know, as we reflect on the life of King Ahaz, he established this alliance with uh, Ezira, okay, the kingdom of Ezira. And he followed their pagan practices. Mm -hmm. okay? And the, the counsel, the divine counsel that we receive uh, from that particular, you know, those verses that you read out from, is for us not to follow the evil practices of these pagan nations, mm -hmm. pagan uh, groups, pagan communities. Mm -hmm. uh, why I'm referring to communities? Because this issue still exists today. It prevails. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And uh, we've, as, as we read those verses, Okay, we, are, we are counseled by God to stay away from it. Mm. Yeah, rely on God rather than yeah. men. Okay. Uh, now for the last two questions, uh, this will be for Rabuni. Why are these warnings so relevant to us today? That's the first thing. First question. And the other one is, rather than listen to demons, where should we turn for counsel? Thank you, Henry. As you mentioned earlier, uh, these uh, practices are prevalent even today. Mm. Uh, communities all over the place, not just in communities, but uh, a lot of us uh, have access to uh, our smart uh, have access to the internet through our smartphones, and wherever we go, it's uh, it's on all sorts of media, from games to uh, uh, movies, and just about every. A medium you could get to, uh, it, it's there, it has its fingerprints there. Um, so yes, it, it's truly relevant to us today. And uh, usually when we get to these, uh, uh, when we, when we uh, seek those, seek counsel from there, it's to, um, to, to, to determine what's ahead of us. Uh, the Bible is clear, God is the only one who knows our tomorrows. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse, seven, verse 6, mm. uh, we're saying, uh, the question asks, uh, to who shall we turn to for counsel? It, it says, um, part of the prophecy of Jesus, it says, For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Mm. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, hear this now, Wonderful Counselor, mm. uh, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Uh, Jesus is our Wonderful Counselor. Paul points out, in him are hid all of the treasures of wisdom, wisdom and knowledge. That's in Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. uh, we need not turn to anyone else, mm -hmm. but to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He alone can reveal everything to us. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ravoni. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the living word, Jesus, and the written word is the counsel also given that we must also read the Bible. Uh, who is the written word, Isaiah chapter uh, 8, verse 20. 
to the law and to the testament if they do not speak according to his word. The Bible mm-hmm. said it is because there is no light in them. Just to add on to that point. Okay, yes. All right, thank you. All right, uh, we are getting to the, the close of uh, our panel discussion uh, today. Uh, you know, turning to God for counsel. Okay, I just wanted to read this verse. So, not only assuring, but reassuring. Okay, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 22, 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Amen. Okay, so God knows Amen. what is in your heart, what is going to come your way. Uh, problems, yes, the solution. Okay, and he, we have this, uh, this assurance. So, uh, you know, this brings uh, our discussion on the hard way, the hard way that King A.S. went through. Mm-hmm. And uh, not only him, you know, has gone through that, we've learned about it, uh, the challenges, the, the difficulties, uh, the lessons that we can draw from that experience. It's, we, you know, we, we are thankful that we can use this, utilize them uh, for our benefit. And once we have that, we should be in a position to share it with, uh, with others. So uh, in closing, what we can see is the prophet Isaiah, through his words, through his actions, through his family, gave King Ahaz you know, messages of warning, messages of hope, that they were all rejected. What is our response to those messages from God today? And we pray that the Lord will guide us uh, and help us. And we will make the decision that is correct, that is acceptable to him for his glory. We shall ask a word of our closing prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful lesson that we've um, discussed, Lord. Lord, we seek for you. Holy Spirit to be with us and uh, we'll also pray for those that are listening in. We pray that uh, you will help us to have uh, hope in you and to always have faith, Lord, in whatever we uh, go through, that uh, we will know that you're here with us and that we will go through this together, Lord. Uh, Lord, continue to guide and protect us, help us to uh, love one another. Uh, For this is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.